And we're back with Texas State Senator Jerry Patterson, Molly Ivins, and David Gold. Mr. Gold, you just wanted to make a point before the break. Well, well, Ted, this is, this is something that I think is very important. Uh, first of all, the last election, November the 8th, uh, here we said goodbye to Ann Richards. I think one of the main reasons why Ann Richards lost, and there are numbers of reasons, including Bill Clinton, but I think one of the most important reasons is she wouldn't even bring this to a vote. That incensed our listeners that they could not even vote on the concealed weapons law that Senator Patterson is bringing forward. And I think in her more sanguine uh, moments, uh, Molly Ivins would admit that her friend Ann Richards stumbled on that one, too. Let me ask Molly Ivins a question that I think is very important to ask our liberal friends when we get into these discussions. Molly, do you believe that the only people to be holding handguns are the police and law enforcement officials? Yeah, I do. Well, that answers our question. And I've been a police, I was a police reporter for a long time, David, and let me tell you what I saw, and I, I still see it today whenever I go to a police station. People who carry guns don't plug bad guys. They plug their friends, their relatives, their loved ones, their little children. I cannot tell you how many times I've watched people brought into police stations shaking with that horrible kind of shock where you jerk back and forth and saying over and over again, please, God, I didn't mean to kill him. Please, God, he's my only son. Please, God, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. That's what you get with guns. You get more guns, you're going to get more deaths like that. All these people running around thinking they're going to play Dirty Harry. It's just machismo nonsense. You know, nobody's going to play Dirty Harry, but the fact remains that these accidents are occurring in the home with guns in the home, and that's perfectly legal today. We're talking about right to carry, self-defense outside the home. This is not even related to accidents at home or children getting guns. It's a totally different issue. Senator, right it, does, it does seem to me logical, though, that if people get into an argument and they're carrying a, a weapon, uh, they're more, they're, I mean, that argument is more likely to turn violent and more likely to turn deadly than if they're not carrying a weapon. Well, that means that Texas is an anomaly because it hasn't happened in the 38 other states that have right to carry. I'll give you an example of a state that has no prohibitions on carrying handguns, and that's Vermont. Now, Vermont, we all know, is a very very bloody state. Of course it's not. It is the fact that law-abiding citizens, when trained, when background investigations, are capable of making decisions about their own self-defense. And those who try to make up uh, horror stories about things in the streets and shootouts at intersections, it simply hasn't happened in no Florida one since makes 1987. Them up, the law was enacted, the murder rate has gone down, the incidents that are described by all the detractors have Our not occurred. Our murder rate went down without a concealed weapon bill. Let's in make it state. go down more. Well, let me just ask you, and then I want to get back to the, the dead serious issue again just for a moment. Let me just ask you, because you are, uh, you are pointing to the statistics. If indeed the statistics do not go down any further over the next two or three or four you tell me how many years, would you then agree that it would be a good idea to ban uh, concealed weapons again, Senator? No, I do not, because it is a constitutional right. Now, if in fact it is good public policy to ban handguns in the possession of citizens so it's outside got nothing, their home, So it's got nothing to do with the numbers then? I mean, why, 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 the cite, because, why cite the well, numbers if you're not going to apply them? Well, no, if we can apply the numbers by amending the Constitution, if we believe that's good public policy, but right now, our Texas Constitution gives us a right to wear arms. The legislature has eroded that right, and those who say it's going to be the end of the world have simply not supported by the facts in other states that have similar laws. That's right. And, and, and again, Ted, I think this, this business about statistics is, is, really, is really kind of ludicrous to begin with. I mean, there are so many reasons for crime rates going up and down. Statistics in the Sun Belt, for instance, are much higher than in the Northeast, let's say, and that's because of neighborhood breakups and stability in some parts of the country. Uh, yes, we have high rates of crime here in Texas. They have high rates of crime in places like Florida and California and wherever, but that's got very little to do with this right to carry bill. This is something that really means nothing to a person who's in the midst of being accosted, a woman who's uh, about to be raped. This is an equalizer. That puts her on equal footing. Why? I just Let me... point out again, David, that the history of handgun use in this country is that the people who get shot and killed are friends and relatives and acquaintances, not some criminal it, stranger that's a very, who's going to sneak up point. on you I'll tell you what, let me, just, uh, let me just raise a question, though, Mr. Gold. Uh, a woman who is about to be raped and who has a gun. Yes. Uh, I, I agree with you. We'll use that gun. We'll be glad to have that gun. And we'll certainly be able to avoid rape as a consequence of that gun. She doesn't need an offer of $5,000 as a bounty, though. I mean, that's the last thing she's going to be thinking about. But, 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 but Ted, that's not the issue. Well, it's those, one of, it's those, one of those, the issues we're kinds, talking about. Those kinds, of, those kinds of groups, like Dead Serious, 
have cropped up because the old liberal answers to crime don't work. We've got people prowling Texas streets that should have been incarcerated and unfortunately are not. And our listeners are not about to sit back and either have one choice, either to be a victim or to be victimized. And they say to themselves, and this law is very carefully written that the senator's discussing here, that you need to be trained, you need to have a background check, you just don't simply go down to the gun store. Mr. Gold, I'm not, I'm not putting Senator Patterson's law in the same category as, as this, this other group that I was speaking about, but you were supportive of, of the dead serious group, and that's why I was asking you specifically about well, that. Well, 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 you support don't, if, the, if, the if, if, the if you are the victim of a crime, or you're about to be the victim of a crime, you have a gun on you, you're going to use it, whether or not someone's offering you a $5,000 bounty, right? That's, it. That's exactly right. All right, so we, 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 so we, we really don't need the bounty, and we really don't need to encourage that kind of lunatic behavior, do we? But, but, but this has been going on for years. I think the, the National Rifle Association awards people, uh, they don't publicize this. I think there was a situation in New York City uh, not long ago where if someone shoots somebody trying to enter a store and break and enter and shoots them in the commission of a crime, they get a cash reward. This is not new, and it's not new to Texas. All right. We are just about at the end of our time. Closing comment, Molly? Well, I, I have some hope for the senator's bill. It could be that it will hold down on the population of trash in the state. We get the cheating husbands, the tomcat and wives, the mean drunks, card cheats and such, and maybe it'll just cut down on that population. All right. Senator, you get the last word. Well, I think when you listen to the comments that are meant to be humorous or sarcastic or both, the person wearing the beanie with propeller on the top is Molly Ivins. I thank you all for joining us this evening. Senator Patterson, Molly Ivins, David Gold, good of you to be with us. Thank you. Thank I'll you. be back in a moment.